This is the Benefits Buzz Podcast, your weekly pulse on what's happening in the world of employee benefits. Brought to you by your friends at WEX, who believe in simplifying benefits for everyone. Now listen up, and let's get buzzed! Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Benefits Buzz. I am super pumped today. Look who's back. Kelsey, it's great to have you back. It feels weird to be back, especially because you keep talking about me being back. <laughs> I've been super excited to have you back. Hayden did such such a good job, our producer, who stepped in as co-host, but I'm pumped for, for you to be here. So. Me too. Shout out to Hayden for hosting while I was having You did such a good job. Well, I'm super excited about what a cool episode for you to come back to. Um, we're in our open enrollment series. For a lot of you, you're already thinking about open enrollment. And one of the things we wanted to do was dive into HSAs, mm -hmm. health savings account. We've done tons of episodes on what is an HSA, but we thought what better way to really bring a HSA to life by talking about real life scenarios and examples. Of That's HSAs. something that resonates with me. I mean, it resonates sure. with everybody. You want to know at the end of the day, what's in it for me? Why would I enroll in this? And sometimes you can't outline that on a handout or like mm. in a presentation. You really need someone to tell you how they use it, why they use it. For so. sure. And there's so many different ways to use an HSA. So mm -hmm. this is great. And I can't wait to talk about this scenario. So first I want to introduce our guests. We have Jessica Sean, who is in our HR department here at Wax, and she's actually brought her husband along for the show. Brian, welcome to the Benefits Buzz podcast. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having us. Are we the first married couple you've had on the show? Are we? I, 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 I think. Well, I think you are. Yeah, I've only been here for three seasons, and I know you're the at least the first that I've been <laughs> a part of. So, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we're super excited to have you on and we're off the gates. We want to thank you for being open and sharing your story. Uh, not everyone is open about talking about how they right. use their benefits. So that's first and foremost, thank you for doing that. But I know our listeners will glean a lot from your experiences with HSAs. All right. So to kick us off, we want to talk about, you know, your experience with the HSA. So tell us a little bit about your history with it. When did you enroll? Why did you enroll? What made you um, pick that plan? Absolutely. Obviously, being in HR had a little more... Um, experience and knowledge with the lingo, so I was a little more comfortable with decisions making. But um, for me, um, when I enrolled in it, it just made financial sense of being in a high deductible plan, having that HSA to help pay for things, and then also getting the employer um, contributions uh, to the HSA was key in, in my decision as well. So when you went through that process, did you use any decision support tools or what helped you determine that it was more cost effective? Because I think one of the things that participants immediately see is that deductible amount and it strikes a little bit of fear in yeah. people. So what made you, um, how did you go about that process of figuring out that it was actually more cost effective? Sure. And I think particularly because it has the word high deductible in front of it, the, the term high is scary, right? Especially when you're talking about um, funds that you may have to spend. For me, looking at, you know, um, and, and for our family when we're, when we're making these decisions and enrollments is what is our typical spend and just knowing that I would actually be saving money by putting it into an, to an HSA um, and we just weren't having the, the costs associated with it and kind of building up that savings account was key. So the, one of the cool things with HSA is that we probably get too excited to talk about is the different ways you can use them. Right. So you can you can buy things, expenses you have for today. You can save dollars and use them for a big emergency or you can even invest those dollars. Um, save, spend, invest, we like to call it. Do you like do all three? Do you find yourself just using one of those three? I think we find every time we ask this question, it's a bit different. Would love to hear your situation, Jessica. Yeah, for for us, it's typically been uh, the HSA has been for saving. Uh, which has been great. We did have um, a couple of years ago, our daughter landed in the uh, emergency room. And so we did utilize those funds to pay for those bills. But um, up until recently, our uh, this has been another uh, investment tool for us and where we've been able to, to put some funds to have them ready if we did have medical costs. But then um, for me, I've also was able to reach the point of being able to start doing a little bit investing, uh, working with our financial advisor to decide, you know, what should we keep um, immediately on hand um, to have available what um, kind of was our appetite for investing with it um, as well. And so that um, up until recently has been how we've approached with our HSAs. I love that. That's a great tip to encourage those listening to speak mm -hmm. to their financial advisor about it because an HSA is really no different than any other financial decision that you're making. Um, and to loop them into that conversation, I mm -hmm. think is really important. Yep. 
Yeah. We don't think to make that connection, I think, because yeah. you think it would benefit, but that's a great point. We love that. We're going to mm -hmm. emphasize that in the show notes, Jessica. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I know you've had, um, let's get to maybe the scenario, right? I know you've had to leverage your HSA dollars and you've had some medical expenses. Would you mind walking through um, your medical situation and how HSAs uh, were a resource for you to tap into for that? I can start with that. I, I, you know, I kept putting money into our HSA, into my HSA every every year uh, and every month. You you put away a certain amount, and then you get your employee match, which is also significant. You know, every year you get to add that, and you because he's building up and building up. And I probably wasn't using it as much as I should for things. You know, you forget what you can use your HSA for, and it just kind of sits there, and it sits there, and it sits there, and it reaches a point where you're like, why do I keep putting money into this? And then you realize why you keep putting money into this is because when you have something significant happen, uh, you have dollars there that are ready to to spend to pay for you know an, an unexpected emergency medical expense, which is really what my situation was. I had never had a surgery in my life. I'd never really been to the doctor for my if, if for anything in my life. I'd never taken a prescription medication for anything in my life uh, outside of going in for my routine physical, which I still didn't do that as routine as I probably should. I was completely healthy and you know everything always came back normal and uh fortunately a, gen a genetic test that i had done determined uh, i had something called a lynch syndrome which is a medical condition a genetic condition which uh puts me at a significant risk for for certain types of cancers one of them being colon that's the biggest you have like a 60 percent chance in your life having colon cancer so i went in for a, a screening and sure enough they found a, a stage three tumor and wow. They needed to get, uh, they needed to take care of that right away. And I needed, I had surgery, I think seven days later and uh, got three quarters of my colon removed. And all of a sudden you don't realize just how much medical expenses and how fast it can rack up and those bills coming in. And certainly you uh, have, you know, the HSA dollars in place and then you have a max on your deductible depending on your plan to see, uh, you know, how much it's going to cost to, to get to, to everything and how much it's going to cost you. But Having those HSA dollars on hand to pay bills as they came in was super helpful. I mean, to not have to d dip into your savings or your checking account or, you know, take some other necessary strains on your finances uh, was huge for us. I mean, I never had to go into my savings or checking account to pay a medical bill because of that. And again, I hadn't really spent money out of there in three, four or five years. I mean, I can't remember the last time I really spent money out of that on a consistent basis. Um, maybe for my chiropractic was, was maybe one area I used it for. So to have that built up to a point where it was beyond my deductible amount meant I was covered. And mm. that really helped uh, me stay ahead of the curve. And then obviously I, I upped how much I was putting into my HSA after that to build it back up again quit more quickly because right. it wasn't just a one year thing. Now you start over again in 2022 and you're still getting some things done when it came to certain treatments I had to have and certain tests I had to have. So it was it was, it's been a huge, huge help uh, to have those HSA pre-tax dollars put away so that uh, it saves you uh, from impacting other financial aspects of your life. That's such an amazing story. And yeah. I mean, there's so many pieces in there that I want to make sure that people heard. One was from the time that you found out to the time that you had to have your first surgery, seven days. I mean, if you're waiting until the point where you need it, it's too late. Um, and the fact that you didn't have to pull out of any other financial accounts that you had, um, because I think I, I have a, I don't have anything near that story, but what I, what resonated with me was, um, you kind of forget about it, right? You're putting all this money in there and you're like, oh, why do I put all of that money in there? I could put that back in my paycheck. But then when you go to log into that account and you're like, whoa, okay, I have this in here for mm -hmm. a reason. I have a backup plan. Should I need it? I think that's something that people need to really pay attention to. That's just it. When when the emergency hits, it's too late to start saving for it, right? Mm -hmm. And so having those funds. And there was a moment I remember Brian was sitting on the couch and he had his computer open and he had started to Google um, some of the operations that he was going to have and some of the chemotherapy treatments that he was going to have. And you start to see what those bills are going to be and what the costs associated to them are. And it's scary because you hear how these medical situations can wipe people out. You go into bankruptcy, it's, it's hard to get caught back up. Um, and I remember him saying like, I'm being scared that he was going to bankrupt us, that what was gonna happen was you know, really going to hurt our family financially. 
but there was no question we were going to do this, right? Like we, he needed this, we needed to have this happen. Uh, and so in that moment, I had to take off my wife hat and put on my HR hat a bit. And we walked through like, okay, but here's, you know, what your deductible is. And then here's what we have in our HSA. And this is why we have it and how we're going to be able to use it to, you know, prevent some of those, those pieces from happening. Cause it's, very natural to worry about the costs associated with all of this and and you know what the the long term impact of that will be. But um for us it, you know, we we're just so thankful to have those HSA dollars there and, and kind of be one piece that we could set aside a little bit. Because as as you pointed out, this happened very quickly and we had a lot of things that we had to prepare and get ready for in those few days that we had. And so it was um, just kind of a relief to to know we had those dollars set aside and ready to spend on this. So a couple of questions. I want to go back to something that Brian said a few minutes ago, and you talked about the deductible amount and you talked about your um, max out-of-pocket amount. Can you go a level deeper on that for maybe those participants who are looking at a high deductible health plan or an HSA for the first time? Um, what do those terms mean? And um, you know, how should they look at those in the grand scheme of their financial situation to determine if this plan is right for them? Well, and, you know, I can only speak for, for obviously for the plan I'm on, you know, we, at the time, I think maybe we caught a little bit of a break because I was on my own plan. So my out of pocket was lower than had we been on a family plan. Had we been on a family plan, that out of pocket would have been twice the amount. So we caught a bit of a break there, I would say, so to speak. Uh, but I think, you have to look at what your max out of pocket is going to be for a, a potential year or an emergency and say, let's at least get to the point where we have that amount or more in that HSA so that no matter what happens, we're covered. Now, there's going to be some things that may not be covered by insurance and may not fall under that, that you may have still have to pay for on top of just the max out of pocket. And that can be, you know, who knows how much, depending on what you're getting done. But at least if you have that, your everything, no matter what is going to be covered. And I, I mean, I could go into the expenses of what the hospital stay cost me for a week and what the surgery cost me and what the test cost me and what the CT scan and the PET scan and the different treatments. I mean, it's astronomical when, when you actually put a pen to paper and look at it all. And for the fact that I was able to get all that covered without having to take anything out of my personal finances and really hurt our family's financial future was really significant. So that's why I would say the first thing you got to pay attention to, depending on your company, is... What is my max out of pocket, whether I have an individual or family plan, we need to make sure that we have at least that amount right. mm -hmm. put away. And why Bri was on his own plan, and I, I cover uh, Amelia on our plan, is because that's how we maximize our employer contributions. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, during open enrollment, um, Brian will bring his book home <laughs> from his employer, and I'll sit down and, and I'll go through that. And, um, you know, I have, you know, being in HR, I've, you know, have a different experience and kind of understand some of those pieces a little bit more than maybe others would. However, the the math is still the same. It's it's looking at what our potential out of pocket, what our premiums were, and then how could we maximize that in employer contribution to our HSAs. And that's why we landed how we did of of um, me ca caring for our daughter um, and then Brian being on his own. And so we could really um, maximize that employer contribution, which certainly in this circumstance um, was beneficial. I would have much preferred to be spending it on contact solution, but. Yeah. Uh, we, well, um, well, good for you and so well thought out because I think that's the risk that we see and what we what we try to, I don't wanna use the word preach, but like the decisions you make in open enrollment are so significant and good for you for taking time. And I, you know, I, I kind of smiled because my wife and I do the same thing. We mm -hmm. look at our plans, we figure out, okay, how much we contribute here? How much is our employer gonna contribute? Should we be a family plan? And and for you that that foresight and that thought, you know, paid off for you, um, and it's great to hear that. And just it's great learning for anyone who's listening Absolutely. that sometimes seven minutes isn't enough to really do a great job choosing. <laughs> yeah. Not even close. It takes me seven minutes just to read like one sheet of the packet. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. It's great. Well, um, it, it sounds like one of the questions we had, but you already answered, which was, you know, have your behavior changed now that you've had to turn to your HSA dollars? I think I heard you say, Brian, that you've upped your your um, contributions, is that correct? To try and get back to that um, out, of, out, of, uh, out of pocket deductible, is that, is that what I heard? Absolutely, I, my, I think I doubled it um, mm -hmm. from where I was previously giving every paycheck just because I realized 
once I got to 22 and you start over again at your deductible, I had to quickly get money back in there to replenish what was lost to try to make up for that because I knew expenses were coming. But even it, hopefully everything kind of comes to a, a halt this year and I get back to a little bit normal living again. And in 23, I can start putting that money back just to pad it up and just save it again and get back to where I need to be That's in great. case something were to happen again in the future, whether it's for me or for our daughter or whoever. Um, but I, I think the biggest thing is, is people, I think, are more savvy to this that have conditions that they know they're going to need their HSA for. The people I think that ignore it are the people that don't have health conditions and don't think there's anything wrong with them and think they're perfectly healthy, especially in their 20s, 30s, and even in the 40s, and think, I don't need this until I get older because that's when my problems are going to start. But you still don't know when you're going to break a leg. You still don't know if, you know, if something like a situation that happened to me, an unexpected, you know, kind of crazy situation medically appears. So I would say to anybody starting, you know, it, get started early, you know, don't wait until you're, you know, in your forties or something. I mean, really start doing it once you get in your twenties and thirties, take advantage of that employee match that helps you build up stuff even faster. And that's, that's just something I think people need to be aware of. And I think it needs to be hammered home as much as possible to people and new employees when they start at their respective companies. Absolutely. I think that's great advice because even I just think to my, of myself and I'm like, when I first had the opportunity to enroll in this plan, I had no clue that I could just keep this money in there. And it was like a savings account and it just kept mm -hmm. building and building and building. And if I would have known that my HSA balance would be a lot higher than it is right now. Right. And I just think people forget that it's, it's your money. It's not going anywhere. It right. continues to grow and it's the perfect place to store that for those emergencies that pop up. Yeah. And I was, I was gonna ask you any final recommendations and I think you just nailed it. I think yeah. it's like, right, these things can happen at any time, yeah. right? Uh, and again, it's it's probably those that think I'm perfectly healthy and fine that may end up eating it the most. And so I think that's really great. And another thing is too, is if your employer does match, right? So those employers and HR pros who are listening as well, we've actually done a lot of research to see how much, um, uh, on average, how much employers are, are throwing into those plans. Um, we did some research and have a benefits trends report that actually walks through. So if you're curious about how much you might or need to be putting in to those plans, we've got some great data for you to, to look at as well. Yeah, we'll throw that in the show notes. We That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, great. Well, first of all, Brian, we're so happy to hear that you're doing well. Um, thank you so much for sharing your story, Jessica. Um, what a great way, what a great way to tell the story of an HSA. Um, we appreciate you being open and honest with our listeners today. So thank you. No, thanks for having us, man. We appreciate it and helping educate another person to not have to go through some sort of financial crisis to realize how important it is is certainly uh, important for us because we know the importance of that now. Great. Thanks so much. We appreciate you coming on. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Wax is in the business of simplifying benefits for everyone. Now, although we certainly hope our podcast sparks some aha moments, like that was pretty cool, but of course we cannot provide legal investment or financial advice. And well, therefore, nothing shared in this podcast should be interpreted as such. We encourage you to seek out appropriate professional advice regarding your plans. Hey, congratulations. You made it through our disclaimer. <laughs> Thanks for listening.